Morning, BookTube. Bill Rutenberg here with the Rutenberg Library. Uh, I wanted to come today. Uh, it's been, you know, a little over a week, and um, I wanted to talk to you about some books. Um, I've been doing lots of reading now that summer has finally hit. Um, if you're not, if you're new to my channel, I'm a teacher, and so um, we teach all the way through the month of May, and then at the end of the of May, depending on snow days, we get out of school, and we have June, July, and then half of August uh, off for summer break. Now I say, you, know, you teachers know what I mean. We have it off um, in, the, in the midst of that. We're having to take classes, having to update uh, what we're doing in the classroom. There's all kinds of things we're actually doing. We don't really have it off. But um, anyway, now that I'm in my off time, um, I, I am preparing, I think I told you in the last video, I am preparing, I got some uh, new classes that I will be teaching. Um, we've kind of rearranged my world history and uh, we've broken it into, it originally started as one class and then a couple years ago we split it into two, uh, oh geez, let's go backwards. Our school, way back in the day, it's been a while since it's been like this, but we used to be on trimesters and everybody else around us is on semesters. So we would teach world history in one trimester. So one third of the school year, which is nearly impossible. It was a, just a terrible system. And so all along, I taught it early when I started and then they changed my classes. And then here in the last 10 years, I've picked it up again. And, um, I, we we're supposed to teach all of world history in one semester. And I was very adamant that that is impossible if you wanna have any detail, if you wanna be able to cover any ground. Um, you know, there's all kinds of complaints about that. So I had talked to my principal and we got the class split into uh, two, two classes. It's still a semester long, but we, we split it into um, I went from ancient history through medieval, and then my second world history two was uh, medieval, from that medieval where I left off to the present. And, um, you know, through some head scratching and trying to just offer more stuff for the kids, we've now split that class into four different classes. And uh, we're just going to rotate it each year where I will do, um, and I, I can't remember what we named the classes because we have to sync that with the state, but um, World History 1 and World History 2 will be this year, and then next year will be World History 3 and World History 4. So anyway, I do have to get going on that. I got to get, uh, I'm probably going to do start that this week, start, you know, kind of dividing things up what chapters or what units am I going to cover during each of those four classes? And then I need to, you know, kind of get on, on the ball about getting all those classes prepared. So long story short, teachers don't have the summer off. That's, that's kind of a joke, but, um, Anyway, it does slow down for us. And now that the month of June is done, because I umpire baseball all through the month of June, which keeps me, you know, keeps me fairly busy every, every, uh, probably every other day or so I've got a ball game. So it's not terribly busy, but enough just to keep my, uh, wets my appetite for baseball and keeps me busy through the summer so I don't go stir crazy. So anyway, I have a lot more reading time during the summer. And I would think that probably most teachers would agree with that. And so um, I, I have been getting a lot of reading done. And I've also picked up, uh, let's see, four more books into the library I wanted to show you. So uh, let's start with, in the mail, what I got. I had an author contact me, and this is super cool. And I wanted to highlight his book on the channel so you guys can all go check it out. Um, this is a fantasy book. Now, if you follow the channel, I don't read you know, I don't tend to read fantasy, so this is kind of a new genre for me. It's introducing me to uh, the fantasy genre. And this book is called Linden Falls, and it's by Joshua Hershey. And he's from uh, Pennsylvania here in the United States. He's from Pennsylvania, and he's got a pretty cool cover there, very colorful, very uh, thought-provoking. Uh, this book came out this year. 
And um, let me read, I'll just kind of read the paper that he sent me that came with this because he, he had contacted me through my email and said, hey, would you be willing to read this? I've been on your, your channel and um, I'd greatly appreciate it. And so I wanted to highlight it on the channel. So um, let's see here. It says, you know, thank you so much for your willingness to read my book, Linden Falls, which is available on Amazon. Go check that out. It won the epic category for the brew book excellence award so you know it's got some it's got some uh, weight behind it here it's got some people who have already read it they have liked it um he also mentioned in addition the book received a five-star review from the reader's choice um and there's an attached letter that comes with that i will try to remember to leave a link to that on the um on the description box below so you can go check that out if you're interested in this book um the review does a great job of summarizing the book, but the quick pitch is the following. So this is his quick pitch for the book. He says, an orphan and rumored witch named Mabel fights to end the darkness that enslaves her kingdom. There are a few biblical themes in the book. The one that I think resonates with readers the most is the pain that comes with feeling like God has let you down and not wanting to live. But in the end of this story, God saves the main character and shows her that he was there for her all along. If you'd, uh, And then he also mentioned, if you'd like to listen to me discuss the book in more detail, you can find me on a podcast called Outside the Panels on YouTube. And I did look that up. I have not yet had a chance to uh, watch it because every time I've tried, uh, my six-year-old has come into the room and I can't concentrate. So I do need to go watch that. I did pull it up and saved it on my YouTube channel, but uh, I would recommend you guys go out and check that out. And then uh, check out his new book, Joshua Hershey's new book, Linden Falls. Um, now, I haven't gotten very far. I've, I've got it started because I am in the middle of trying to finish a couple other books, but, that, but I am going to hit this and I'll probably talk about it later in the month. Um, but I am... I have read through the first five chapters, the first uh, 57 pages, and um, I'm enjoying it. It, uh, it does a really good job. It's it's sorting out good versus evil and that kind of stuff, and it's you know talking about different magical powers that go with each, and it's got a lot of different things going on. And um, and like I said, I'm honest. I don't read fantasy, so I I'm trying to keep all of this stuff straight in my head. And um, it might be one of those books I need to read a second time just to make sure I caught all of it. But um, it's good so far. He does a really good job of describing uh, the world around uh, Mabel and you know where she's at and. Um, pretty good. So go check it out. Linden Falls. And thank you, Joshua, for sending that to me. I appreciate that. And um, like I said, I'll talk more about that later in the month. So let's look at some new books that I got in the library. I just got three new ones that I picked up at, at um, where did I get these? Uh, oh, I got these at the Jesse James Antique Mall. Uh, they got a, a few different book sections in there that I like to go to. And so um, the first one that I found that I was really excited about, because I've read this author before, his name is David Moranis. David Moranis. Um, I read a biography that he wrote on um, Roberto Clemente, which is uh, kind of a hero of mine in the baseball world. And it was an awesome, awesome um biography. So now, uh, this book is called They Marched Into Light, War and Peace, Vietnam and America, October 1967. And um, I am not well read, and by that I mean not read at all with Vietnam. Um, I, I can't remember if I've read any full-scale histories of, I don't believe I have. Um, I have very little knowledge of what went on. I got the general stuff from my history courses, you know, but not in-depth readings. So this is going to be something that's going to, you know, spur my thinking, get me going with uh, Vietnam. And it's also going to be a fourth quarter Historathon 2023 book that I am going to read. Um, I don't want to do the TBR for that already because it's kind of early, but uh, I am going to read this. I'm going to also buddy read this with 
peg over at the history shelf. I had mentioned it to her and she's going to go get a copy. She sounded very uh, excited about partaking in this. And so we're going to buddy read this for the fourth quarter of Historathon 2023. So what is this about? Let me let me uh, read the back cover for you. Oh, real fast before I forget, before I read the back cover, this book is a Simon and Schuster book out of New York, and it's a 2003, originally published in 2003. This is a 2004 copy. Um, yeah, so real excited about that. Let me let me read the back cover. It says, here's the epic story of Vietnam in the 60s, told through the events of a few gripping, passionate days of war and peace in October of 1967. They marched into sunlight, brings the tumultuous time back to life while exploring questions about the meaning of dissent and the official manipulation of truth, issues as uh, relevant today as they were decades ago. <coughs> Excuse me. In a seamless narrative, Marinus weaves together the stories of three very different worlds, the death and heroism of soldiers in Vietnam, the ang anger and anxiety of anti-war students back home, and the confusion and of Obfusca obfuscating, I, I'm not familiar with that word, <laughs> uh, behavior of officials in Washington. To understand what happens to the people in these interconnected stories is to understand America's anguish. Based on thousands of primary documents and 180 on-the-record uh, interviews, the book describes the battles that evoked cultural and political conflicts that still reverberate today. And so real excited to pick that up. Real excited that Peg agreed to uh, buddy read this. Um, actually, I don't even know if I, it was actually her idea. Thank you, Peg, for inviting me to this buddy read. Um, I just asked her if she had read the book because she's, because she's read, you know, quite a few books on Vietnam and a lot of soldier memoirs and stuff like that. And she said she hadn't. And she was like, hey, let's buddy read that for fourth quarter. So real excited about that. Always I'm always excited to buddy read with Peg. She's she is just all sorts of full of information and and just a good a good reading partner. Um, so the next one that I found uh, was by D. Brown, and of course she um, has a a lot of stuff in um, uh, Native American history, and so yeah, super excited about that. The Fetterman Massacre is the one that I picked up, and it is a bison book. I think that's Nebraska, and that the yeah the University of Nebraska Press out of Lincoln, and it says the former title was Fort Phil Kearney, an American Saga, uh, but this is the Fetterman Massacre, and I read another short take on some Native American works, what, what, a month ago, and I really enjoyed it, and so I'm hoping to pick up a little bit more. This is a 1962 book, um, or the originally 1962. The, this is the first bison book printing, and so this book is 1971. Uh, it says, The Fetterman Massacre occurred on December 21st, 1866 at uh, Fort Phil Kearney, a small outpost in the foothills of the Bighorns, the second battle in American history from which came no survivors. It became a cause celebre and was the subject of a con congressional investigation. Although the story has been treated many times in fiction and articles, this meticulously documented book based on army records and firsthand reports should stand as definitive. It is by far the best account yet of Fort Phil Kearney and the stirring events that took place, a must for devotees of Western Americana. And that comes from uh, Robert E. Hannon of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Um, yeah, so looking forward to that. It's got um, this really cool fold-out map. I always like maps. Kind of helps me put things in place. I'm a geography guy. So anyway, it's a short short book as you can see it's only 251 pages but uh, i found that they are information packed i always like that so that brings us to the last book that i picked up and it's a bit of a chunky monkey this is almost a miracle the american victory in the war of independence by john furling um 
yeah, this is, like I said, big, thick, chunky book. It is from Oxford University Press, which is always a plus. Uh, they always put out awesome history books. Um, let's see, printed in 2007. And I've read some other books by John Furling. I Let's see, I read one, I think, on John Adams. I read one on Washington, maybe, a, maybe even a couple on Washington. I can't remember exactly. I'd have to look up. Uh, look up on my book list what the titles of those works. I can't remember exactly what the titles were, but um, he does an excellent, excellent job with uh, revolutionary era history. So let me read this inside cover to you. It says, in this gripping chronicle of America's struggle for independence, award-winning historian John Furling transports readers to the grim realities of that war, capturing an eight-year conflict filled with heroism, suffering, cowardice, betrayal, and fierce... Uh, dedication. As Furling demonstrates, it was a war that America came much closer to losing than it than is now usually remembered. General George Washington put it best when he said that the American victory was little short of a standing miracle. Okay, and I'm not going to go through the rest of it, but you kind of get the idea of what that's about. Um, try to keep the video a little bit shorter so I don't have a half hour saga going on. But uh, yeah, go check out those books that I picked up. Uh, I know I'm really looking forward to digging into them. So those are new books into the library. Now, the big adventure that's going on in my house right now, and I told you in previous videos, we bought a new house. I think I told you in previous videos. But anyway, we bought a new house, and I'm really, really excited uh, because I'm going to have quite a bit of space for my books. I'm going to be able to actually display all my books, not have half of them in boxes. Now, with that being said, as you guys know, if you've ever moved, <laughs> you don't know how much you have until you move. And uh, yesterday, it was funny because um, in this closet off to the side here, I've got two bookcases that sit in here, and they're just the half bookcases, the smaller ones, the ones that have, you know, like three shelves, except for I bought an extra shelf and then I bought an extender. <laughs> so it's actually got five shelves, um, but they're, but they're smaller bookcases. And I started boxing up books because sure enough, in a couple of weeks, three weeks, four weeks, something like that, we should be starting to move stuff to the new house. Um, we don't have a, a final date just yet. Um, hopefully sooner than later, because we don't want to be doing that in the middle of uh, school, the first week of school. But anyway, Got to doing my uh, boxing of books, and those two shelves alone, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, that's 14 boxes on those two shelves alone. And I've got these giant massive ones that go all the way to the ceiling right here behind me. And then upstairs in the upper room, I've got, how many do I have up there? Is there like eight bookshelves up there, something like that, that... Uh, or the tall bookshelf, not quite as tall as the Billy's from Ikea, but uh, they're more of the Walmart Target bookshelves uh, where they got five, but I, I built an extra shelf in there so they could hold more books. So they got actually six shelves worth. I got like, I think eight of those and I've got to get them all boxed up. And I'm sitting here wondering how many boxes is this going to take? And then of course, I've got some that are already in boxes and I've got some of them boxed up at school that are kind of stuffed in corners of my classroom. Um, anyway, I've been watching Sean D. Stanfast's videos, and uh, I'm feeling your pain, Sean. I'm feeling your pain. And I don't think I have as many as Sean does. His He's got quite the collection there. I think he said, did, did he say 14, 15,000? Is that what you said, Sean? It, it was a big number. I could be way off, but I, I remember it being a fairly large number. Mine is not nearly as extensive as his, but I do have quite a few. So here at the Rudenberg Library, we've been boxing up books. Uh, we began that process and um, quite the adventure. You don't know how much you have until you move. So ah, that's what's going on with me. Um, as far as just what's you know what's going on in life, took my daughter to the pool yesterday. My wife and I did, and and uh, we had a lot of fun. She's she's not super tall, uh, you know. She's only six years old, so we were going on the the big slides in the pool and had quite a bit of fun there. But I kind of had to hold her up and make sure she didn't fall underwater because um, she can barely stand in the water. But she had a lot of fun, and she was pretty brave in going on one of them by herself, and I was down at the bottom to help catch her, but um, pretty brave kid.
in the in the midst of all of that, like I told you earlier, I have been getting some reading done. So let's go over what I've been reading. I'm just going to give you a couple of the books that I'm reading, uh, the hard copies, because I got a couple more upstairs. I got, I want to say it's close to 10 books going right now. I'm going to give you the main ones that I've been reading. So uh, I already told you I started on that um, Linden Falls book. Um, I have been really hitting hard. James Mishner, uh, Hawaii. Excellent, excellent book. Highly recommend this to anybody. I am almost, almost to the halfway point. You know, when you get 500 pages into a book and you're not even halfway yet, you know it's a good sized book. Um, but that's where I just crossed the 500 mark uh, this morning. I've been reading, I've been trying to, my goal is to, to read 30 pages a day. And if I can read 30 pages a day every day for the rest of the month, um, I should have this done at the very end of June. The last day of June, I'll have it done. Um, it's like 30 or 31 pages a, a day. So I've been trying to read 30 and maybe a few extra pages. And uh, that's the very first thing I've been doing every morning, trying to get this read. Because sure enough, on the shelf, I have Alaska, James Mishner's book, Alaska, sitting in the, uh, you know, off the side of the main stage here waiting its turn. So I want to get that done. This is excellent, though. Uh, first half of the book, what I've covered so far is uh, they've talked about the formation of, you know, like like Mishner does in all in most of his books on these these epic books. Uh, he takes the geographical formation of whatever area we're looking at. So La, uh, the last book I read was Centennial. So it talked about uh, Colorado and the building of the Rocky Mountains. In this one, it talked about the building of the Hawaiian Islands and the, the volcanoes and stuff like that. And then it brought the Polynesian peoples uh, from um, uh, Bora Bora. They brought them north to, to populate the Hawaiian Islands. And that was a large segment of the book. And then it brought the American missionaries in the 1820s to uh, try to Christianize the islands and that whole adventure that went through that. And then it's been talking about the whaling industry and all the whaling ships that stop in port at Hawaii. And um, I am sitting in about the year 18... What was it? 1868, I think, somewhere around in there. And they have began the process of bringing Chinese people to the Hawaiian Islands to work the sugar fields. And so uh, that's what I got started. Well, it'd been last night, I think. Or no, 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 at the pool. I was reading a little bit at the pool while my wife was off swimming with Katie Bell. Uh, I was reading this and, and they started talking about uh, the Chinese people coming to uh, the Hawaiian Islands. And what we're finding is this is an epic and the story of Hawaii is epic. It's got many different peoples that have helped to form what we, you know, what we know as today as Hawaii. Um, yeah, very, very good. Always enjoy James Mishner. Another book that I've been reading, uh, this is a fiction book, another fiction book. This is The House of Lincoln by uh, Nancy Horan. And this is a fairly new book. I think this came out this year. Let me, let me check here. It's from Sourcebooks. And yeah, 2023. This came out this year. Um, I went to the library with my daughter and we were trading in uh, the Boxcar Children. We started reading those. That was one of my favorite books as a, as a kid. And the reading challenge that I'm doing at, at one of the other libraries, um, they, they have a reading challenge that goes all year long. And so every month they do a challenge. And this month's or maybe it was last month's, it might have been last month's challenge that I hadn't gotten done yet. Last month's challenge was read a childhood favorite. And so that was one of my all-time favorite books was The Boxcar Children. And I read a lot of them, not, not all of them, but a lot of them. And so I'm going back and reading those with Katie Bell and she absolutely loves them. And she's always trying to figure out uh, the mystery and she's asking questions and, you know, just fully engrossed in the story and it's so much fun to listen to her um you, you know her mod listen to her when she's talking and you can just see the wheels are turning in her mind um so anyway when i was at the library long story short um that's one of the books upstairs by the way or actually we brought it downstairs we read the mystery the ghost ship mystery or the mystery of the ghost ship i can't remember what it was called about a um yeah, ghost on or what they thought was a ghost on a ship, but um, that was that was one of them I read this week or finished with Katie Bell. Uh, so get back to the original book I was talking about. Nancy 
uh, Horan, hopefully I'm saying Horan, maybe, uh, The House of Lincoln. So this is a book that takes place, um, I'm about halfway through it, I'm about exactly halfway through it, and um, really good book. It takes place in the, starts in the late 1840s, and then goes all the way through the 1850s, and I'm at the presidential election right now in 1860, and it takes <clears throat> it's it's the story of this little girl who um, is working in the Lincoln household. He's, she's working for uh, Mary Mary Todd, and she helps with you know doing the laundry, cleaning the house, fixing the food, uh, dealing with the kids. She does all kinds of things, and um, basically it's her experience in the Lincoln household. And the whole story is wrapped around. Uh, the events of the 1850s, mainly dealing with slavery, and uh, how is Mr. Lincoln going to handle slavery? And um, it's just absolutely wonderful story, and and it really, I think, it took off right at the very beginning. It talked about um, runaway slaves, and they were harboring them in in Springfield, Illinois, and the slave catchers were coming, and so it gives you this dramatic event right at the very beginning, and. Um, makes you see the evils of uh, slavery. And then it takes you through those various events and this little girl's thinking and, and how it evolves. And it evolves right along with Mr. Lincoln. And she's, she's fallen in love with the family itself. She's, she's becoming very loyal to the family. And it's just a really good all-around story, historical fiction, highly recommend The House of Lincoln. Uh, again, I'm about halfway through. I'm not all the way done, so maybe I shouldn't give my my uh, vote of approval yet, but I think it's going to get my vote of approval. All right, and then the last one that I'm going to talk about that I am buddy reading right now, and this is for Historathon 2023. I'm buddy reading this with my friend Brian over at his channel, uh, Brian MR. Go check him out. Excellent, excellent booktuber. Uh, you talk a guy about a guy who is... Uh, when you when you do a buddy read and you do your Voxer stuff with him, he's got all kinds of insight, and I absolutely love listening to you know his his thoughts, his questioning of stuff, whether it be the events or the authors themselves. You know he he does a really good job of questioning. Well, I'd like to see the sources behind that and see where he's getting these ideas. You know he does a really good job of that, and I've I've buddy read with him a few times. And uh, we've become uh, pretty good friends over uh, the Voxer. And um, yeah, anyway, buddy reading with him. Great guy. Go check out his channel. Go subscribe to him. He deserves it. Uh, he's got a great sense of humor. You'll enjoy talking with him. Uh, but we're reading American Colonies by Alan Taylor. Now, this is um, a good-sized book. It's not huge. It's, it's not as big as it looks. Paper's kind of thick, if that makes sense. Uh, 500 and... 526 pages. So, I mean, it's a big book, but not big, big book. It's um, it's a book I had on my shelf that I actually was kind of intimidated to get started on. I didn't know if it was something I was going to get bogged down in. I haven't been bogged down in it at all. We've read about one chapter of this every day. I think I, think I missed, I had to split one of the chapters because I got busy with something. But otherwise, I've read one chapter a day. I do have to finish today's chapter, but I'll get that done after the video or later today. I'll get it done. Um, but anyway, the chapters, um, you're looking at chapters of uh, anywhere from about 15 to 20 pages. Sometimes uh, one of the chapters, I think, was was it 27 pages, maybe one of them. But, you know, manageable chapters. He breaks, the, he breaks down each chapter into different sections. So, like, this chapter is on... Uh, so we're talking American colonies. So we're talking Canada and the Iroquois uh, from the years 1500 to 1660. And he breaks this into the fur trade, uh, Canada itself, the five nations, the Dutch trade, Jesuits. And I think that takes us, oh, destruction. And then that takes us to the end of that chapter. But um, he's given a lot of background stuff. Uh, it's primarily been the Spanish that he's been talking about, uh, starting with uh, Christopher Columbus. Well, actually, no, he started with the Native Americans, talked about um, the, the populating of North America and how you had a lot of individual different uh, groups, even more diversified than what we know of uh, when, the, when the Europeans arrived. Um, it was more diversified than that. 
and um, he, he started with the with the Native Americans, and then he, when he brought over Europeans, he went to Columbus, and then the Spanish in the Caribbean, the Spanish in Mexico, the Spanish in the North American Empire, and he's just kind of slowly moving along. And like I said, today's was more about the French in Canada. So thoroughly enjoying this. He's got some. Uh, I found he's got some pretty good one-liners explaining stuff, and I'll I'll try to do what I want to do is a book chat on this. And I've been taking I, I haven't taken notes on most of my books for quite a while, and um, I've only been doing notes on the buddy reads. So um, here I am on another buddy read taking notes, and so I'll I will try to give you some of those one-liners because he he does a pretty good job of. Um, laying out the scenario for you. He's pretty blunt in some cases, um, but he does a really good job of summarizing everything. Um, I, I wanted to pick this up because I just, I'm always looking to add knowledge to my American history stuff. And um, one good thing, and maybe it's not as good a thing, I'm not sure yet, but I have found that there's not a lot of new stuff that I've learned. He's He's taken a couple of different ways of explaining stuff that I've enjoyed and I'm going to probably use in my classroom. But overall, I've pretty much known a lot of this stuff. So maybe I was a little bit better educated than I thought on this topic. So I was pretty excited about that. Um, you always want to learn new stuff. Don't get me wrong, but it's always also good to see that, oh yeah, I did know a little bit. <laughs> so um, anyway, I am uh, right at this very moment, 102 pages in. Uh, I will be 113 pages by the end of today. Uh, that's the end of the chapter. So I got like 11 pages left to read in the chapter, but I'll get that done today. And I'll be talking with Brian about it. We've been doing a good job every morning of leaving messages for each other. But anyway, that's what I'm reading, BookTube. What are you reading? What are you uh, digging into right now? Are you involved in any events? Um, I know July um, is Historathon 2023. It's the third quarter, and we're dealing with history books, nonfiction history books from the year 1500 to 1820. Uh, so I've got this going. And then when I get one of these, you know, a couple of these other books done, I'm going to have some more historathon books that I'm going to get into. Uh, uh, July is also July at War, a new uh, reading event that got put together this year. And I am hoping to participate in that in the second half of July. I have, um, oh, now I got to think of the separate piece that I bought, a new book, a uh, separate piece. I mean, it's not a new book. It's a new book in my library. Um, I, I bought a nicer copy, and I'm hoping to read that book for uh, uh, BookTube at War. Sorry, went blank on the name. Um, but anyway, what are you reading? That's the big question here. What are you reading? Have you read any of these books? Have you read They Marched Into Sunlight by David Moranis? Is that pretty good? Has anybody out there read that? So, Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to my rambling video. I hope you all are doing well. I do have a couple of videos that I want to make. One of them is going to be based on comments from the viewers. Uh, I want to address a subject. It's it's not like an, uh, an aggressive video by any means. I just want to explain. And then I have a second video. I got tagged in a new booktube tag uh, by Gareth that he created, and I'll get more into that. I'll probably put that up on Thursday, um, but I want to do that tag, and I'm going to try to get that done today. So anyway, BookTube, I hope you're all doing well. I hope your weather is good. I hope you're enjoying the outdoors. Um, I hope you're enjoying some books, most of all. So until next time, happy reading.